So I'm going to talk about this in a couple different points. When I hear the word mandate, um, I also hear what's around that, which is force and a restriction of access, which is exactly what the mandates and passports have been talking about. So in this part of the world, we see force used in certain ways, but in, in most of us are probably aware that we would not want something forced on us medically in most situations. I mean, even in an emergency situation, would we want force or would we want care? If we go to our doctor, do we want them to hear us? Do we want to be able to ask questions and get accurate, informed answers? Do we want our doctor and healthcare provider to walk through the process of informed consent with us? If we do, then it's probably obvious that a mandate would completely circumvent what we've probably all been privileged enough to experience at least a little bit in our lifetimes here. So that's one aspect about the word mandate that really makes me feel alert. <laughs> and recently I was part of a group where I saw a post that said that those people who were not getting vaccinated were suffering from entitlement. It was a different lens. I really hadn't looked at it that way, especially because I'm a proponent for informed consent uh, way before COVID ever came around on all issues. I've seen what happens when people have medical care forced on them. It's not care anymore. It's trauma. And it can change their whole life. The other thing that I'll just leave with is that the most recent research that's out regarding the vaccines in 5 to 11 year olds is mirroring the research that's now being shown on those for teenagers, where the risk of myocarditis from the vaccine may be higher than the risk of being hospitalized with COVID. Have you ever had myocarditis? Have you had a loved one who's had myocarditis? My second husband had it from a strep infection. He almost died. He could have died. He was sick for two months afterwards. He was a perfectly healthy, athletic man. To subject someone to something that has that kind of a risk without informed consent, is that really what we want to stand for in our country? So I'll leave you with that and questions to take into your hearts on this issue. No, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, Britt. Uh, I'm actually involved in a case right now. I represent a mother who does not want her teenage boys vaccinated. If dad does, they're divorced. 50-50 custody. Mm -hmm. And uh, I finished uh, the arguments, and uh, we, we both had competing experts. Um, and the, the numbers are completely real. The survival rate for unvaccinated um, adolescents is... 99.997% for unvaccinated. Um, that's 100%. I mean, I, don't get me wrong, I'm not minimizing those young people that right. did die, right. but that's 100% survival rate. So if you have that great of a survival rate unvaccinated, why on earth would you force these kids to get vaccinated and run the risk of myocarditis or any of the numerous other dangerous side effects. Um, there is a, there's a federal website called VAERS that talks about uh, vaccination injuries, and you can go on there and there are literally thousands of vaccination injuries as a result of the COVID vaccine. And it ranges from myocarditis to, I mean, I can't even remember them all, there were so many. And the, and the increase, if you look at the increase over the last couple of decades of vaccine injuries, uh, you know, the other ones were the regular, the standard vaccines that everybody gets, and I don't think anybody's arguing. I mean, my client's not an anti-vaxxer. Her kids have had all of their vaccinations, all of them. Uh, she is simply not in favor of an EUA vaccine being forced on her children. If it gets fully vaccinated, if it gets fully approved, she'll give them the shot. She doesn't have any problem with that. But right now, she doesn't. She does have a problem with it. And so, I think you're spot on. I don't think there should be mandates, and I think everybody, especially with uh, adolescents, should just be careful. I, the, the, deal I the, the deal with the VAERS, I think, if I'm not mistaken, is like less than two percent are reported. I think it's around two percent because a lot of doctors don't know about VAERS. And 
than the ones that do. It's so much paperwork that they have to do over and continue and continually. But some of them are just not putting it out there. I, I, and I guess for me, um, thank you all for, for those uh, comments. Um, I just have an issue with mandating anything, like on a, on a person's body, where they don't have any chance to be able to say what they want to put in their body. And for me, I don't know, maybe it's because I watch Handmaid's Tale, I don't know. But <laughs> it, it, it seems like it's like a slippery slope when you start saying you have to do this, especially when it comes from a fear of something. Like whenever you use fear, fear is associated with emotion to me. And whenever you do something out of an emotional state, and I and I'm not I'm not uh, dismissing the, the um, urgency in regards to like the health scares and things that's going on. What I'm saying is that when we start saying that the government or whoever has a right to say you have to put this into your body, you have to do this, and you know, and again back to uh, Pat's point um, about employers. Florida can do their private, they can do what they want to do. I guess for me, when it's this big umbrella of the government saying, you have to, then what's next? What next will they do? And I know I probably sound like a um, crazy person, but I mean, that's just that's just something that I think about when it comes from, you know, it's like, okay, how does this slippery slope happen? You know, is this something that we're starting here and then we'll go to something else? How do we, how do we balance that? So that's that's my that's my take on it. And that's why that's why I wanted to focus those questions though, because I think yeah. I think that those are dissimilar as well. They're two different they're two different concepts. Um, and I struggle. I, I, yeah. I don't know where I come down on it. Right? Yeah. I just really don't. Yeah. Uh, because I think, from my perspective, everything has to emanate from some sort of law and some sort of some sure. sort of, of power. Mm -hmm. And I don't I don't know I don't know how they can do that for not for some of the reasons that you that you, that you just brought up. I just don't know the answer to. Them. Yeah. Can I make a quick comment? Sure. Um, I've been vaccinated, but I can see both sides of the situation, both yes. sides of the story. I heard a, I heard a situation today from a client of mine who's got a, who's got an assistant in a place full of elderly. Um, uh, mother and father stayed with them, and the son was a total anti-vaxxer, which is fine. That's his right. Sure. He was diagnosed with uh, COVID eight nine days. But he carried on visiting and didn't tell anyone. Oh, so that's their response. That's, that's, yeah. so that's, so, that's, that's, that's just yeah, that's, yeah. That's, yeah. That's, yeah. That's, yeah. And, and I think some yeah. of the people who want everybody vaccinated, and I'm not saying I'm not one of them, sure. I don't sure. know. Yeah. Um, probably they're trying to stop this infection spreading and curbing it because there are a lot of selfish and responsible people yeah. who don't really care. Yeah. Um, I agree. How do you deal with that? So yeah. maybe it's not vaccinate or not vaccinate, it's not mandate, it's trying to figure out these people. Maybe there should be some... So that's actually one of the questions I had early on when we first started talking about the vaccine, is like it being rushed through, but also being rushed through because we were getting pressure. Well, we need to open businesses up again, and we need to get the economy jump-started. And so I feel like the pressure to move it forward so quickly was, it's like a slide of puzzle. You can't do this until you move this piece here and you do that piece here and things get slammed around. And and so like, but also I feel like the same people who are forcing us to reopen businesses when people are exposing everyone to COVID are the same ones who don't want to get the vaccination. That is just that correlation or causation or whatever. It's just an interesting thought that I had at the beginning. But I, I agree with you. Like. People should be mindful. I mean, exposing yeah, somebody to COVID, like when I was uh, dating apps during, you know, like I wasn't going out, but like it almost felt like I was talking to a potential partner about STDs. Like, well, I'm gonna say that. Like, well, about AIDS and stuff. Is right. Like, yeah, yeah, like, you can have AIDS. Like, you know, yeah. yeah. Like if I have AIDS and I don't tell people, I don't yes. tell a partner yes. that, and I expose them to that, that's criminal. Yeah. You can go to jail for that. Yeah. And like it feels like that, like this. I have a kid. I'm not, and I had people getting really mad. Well, I'm not gonna vaccinate, and I'm not gonna blah, blah. like that's fine. I'm just not gonna go on a date with you. And that was very offensive. Apparently. And it's some people that feel the, the other side of that that if you have been vaccinated, they don't want to date you either. I mean, you know, it's sure. just like on both sides, of this is really extreme, very right. extreme right now, and very divided. Did you have anything that you guys wanted to add, Aaron or Michael? I was just gonna say something funny how everyone knows a doctor. Who said this? <laughs> Everyone knows a scientist who said this, and I think that we really get in the habit of cherry picking uh, what we want to hear when we say that. And I'm just tired. 
I, I, uh, you know, I hear, I hear these things that have already been refuted, and, and but I'm just tired. I don't even want to. I'm to the point now where I don't even want to get into it again because I'm going to have to get into it next week, and it's, I'm going to be saying the same things. It's just going to be somebody different. Uh, and I think, and I was just going to say overall, I think that really what it boils down to is in this country now we've had this, we have this deep distrust with institutions. And I think there's two ways of looking at that mistrust. And one side mistrusts institutions and so they immediately reject them. And another side, uh, and I'm not labeling the sides. Sure. Um, they see they they mistrust institutions, but but they want us. They want to work towards making them better. Um, not really. Uh, I guess my degree is health sciences. Uh, health sciences. So I trust doctors that say that the vaccine is is safe and uh, that we should be doing it. That's it. Okay. Um, good thing to look up sometimes. I mean, approved drugs that the FDA has approved that's been recalled and taken off the market. But trust the science all the way. Well, there's a lot of them every year that are taken off the market. And that's FDA. Yeah, just a point of clarification too, just for Sarah. Uh, for, forcing people to go back to work was never about the COVID, just so you know. It was, it was never about coronavirus. I know. So, Michael knows, no. I know. But no, it was really about the governor's power to shut down businesses. So I, I can tell you that really was political and not about science or about coronavirus. I, so the same people who, yeah, who don't like the mandates were just uh, essentially checking the, gover the governor's power. Oh, sure. Uh, you have something to say? The comment about about um, check check the FDA list about what what drugs have been recalled. Well, let's not take any drugs. I mean, I mean then, then, I, then I'm not going to be prescribed anything. I'm, I'm going to go get leeches. I hate to some extent, that, 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 you know, I, I'm being stupid a bit, but I don't know how often. But uh, it, 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 it's to some extent that it, it's it's. It's, there's, there's a level of risk to which you will always take. And that, and, and I guess people, that, that's the personal choice thing. And, but I'm just, I'm not going to be scared of, of taking something that, that has been in production, not for this particular virus, but for the, the type of, of vaccine since the 70s. Um, so, perhaps. Well, and we, and you, guys can, you guys can exchange numbers at um. <laughs> about these kind of conversations that people feel very strongly on both sides of it and you just it just is what it is yep so me personally I don't like being forced to do anything but if my mom said Grace you're gonna get the vaccine it's gonna help you sure okay I'm fine with that I'm a kid she can choose for me I know she probably wouldn't want to do that to do that but if my parents said, Grace, you're going to get the vaccine, I'm okay with that. But um, also about the science about this, science has a lot of holes and it's not always correct. Like, science isn't going to explain everything and it hasn't. So we can't always just trust science for something this big. People have died. But then again, the vaccine has helped a lot of people too. Yeah, it's definitely all, all the animals. We have one question in the back, and then we're going to wrap this up. Um, so, my standpoint as a black woman, um, so in history class, at least for me going to a predominantly black school, we hear stories about Henrietta Lacks. Yes. Um, the Tuskegee syphilis experiment. Yes. I was going to so, touch on that, but thank you. As somebody who is black in America, hearing those stories, mandates are extremely tricky. Yeah. I am very much pro-vaccine and hope that everyone does get it, but I also understand from 
that standpoint why it's tricky because there have been situations in which black people have been forced to do something and it has been completely for, like not for their well-being. Yeah. That being said, in this particular situation, it's kind of a thing on which we have to consider what is best for the common good of everybody. I hear a lot of people always say, well, there's a 98.9% .9 survival rate, and it's not worth it. Well, 98.9% .9 of the population versus 1%. 1% of the world population is 78 million people. So I feel like in one sense, it's good to kind of still give everybody their civil liberties to not force something on them, but we have to also consider there's still a lot at stake. A one person, one percent of the population is still enough people to do damage, and there's already been enough people who have passed away to do damage. We're in a labor shortage right now, and it's not necessarily because people don't want to go back to work. It's because there is a lot of people who have passed away. So it's one of those tricky things in which I get kind of what they're doing. It's almost like a scare tactic, like, oh, we're going to make everybody get the vaccine because, in my opinion, I feel like it's more of a well, maybe if we scare them into we're going to force it on them, maybe they'll all kind of want to take it into their own accord and get it. Yeah. And I feel like because this whole entire world has been flipped upside down over the past two years, everyone is out of their minds and crazy. Because everybody's scared, even the people who don't actually take it seriously, they're scared. Because there's so much uncertainty. We don't know if we're going to go close down again, we don't know if we're going to hear somebody pass away. So it's just... It's a slippery slope, but I can kind of understand why it's kind of heading towards where it is because of how much is at stake. But ultimately, I don't think it's I don't think a mandate is going to be the best decision based on the history of America and based on even decisions like um, Texas with women's reproductive rights. Because yeah. if we allow them to mandate us to get a vaccine, well then everything that people are trying to do now to protect women's reproductive rights, they could go ahead at a drop of a dime and say, well, you let us tell you to get the, va the vaccine, so why can't we tell you what you can do with your uterus or not? Well, and that's the thing that, that's, and that's my, um, that's my only thought process on this is, um, I, I have found, so I found this interest in the last two years with people having very strong opinions about a lot of things in the last two years, is that people kind of pick which ones you know, work for them because it works for them, right? So for me, it's like, okay, if they can mandate this and you'll be up to, you know, good for, you know, okay with them mandating this, then if they mandate this on this end, then you're not okay with it because it doesn't, you don't agree with it. So that's the part where I feel like people need to really be honest with themselves and say, okay, do we like the mandating part of it or do we like the fact that I feel safer because they're doing this? You get what I'm saying? That's the question for me is that, we pick what works for us. And if we like it, then it's good. And then, but if it doesn't, if we don't quite like it, then it's not good. It doesn't work like that. It, you, you, it's it's, it's got to go across the board. You know, so that's my thought process on it when we start talking about mandating something. Because for a lot of people that are agreeing with mandating, it's because they want it to happen because they don't want to die, essentially. I mean, that's mostly, I mean, that's really what it boils down to is people don't want to be sick, they don't want to die. They want to be protected, so they want everybody else to take that into consideration as well, which I have no problem with that. But what part of that, if it goes to something else, will you still be okay with mandating? You know, that's my that's my um, question on it. So, I just have a two part comments, real quick. First of all, I think when we, a great deal of the country and the world were like in fear. There were people who overcame their fears to still go out and do, you know, services and, you know, provide the goods that the people needed during the time. The same fear that kept people at home, a lot of people that went out and worked, dealt with that same fear. But they overcame this, you know, so everybody here and the people making the laws could have somewhat of a normal life. And um, to turn around and then put a band-aid on, okay, now we got the shot, take it or get out. And you were in the trenches the whole time. Oh, you're talking about like the nurses? Right. The yeah. It's yeah. disgraceful. It's yeah. disgraceful. And secondly, you know, the people who are at risk of this COVID have always been at risk for a great deal of things. There's, there's been no talk on, you know, safeguarding or building your immunity. No talk on nutrition. They tell you, you know, you diabetes, high blood pressure, all of this. This is stuff where you're at risk. You can catch a cold and die tomorrow. 
you know, but nobody's addressing this. You know, when it, it, going back to yeah, when I was a kid, we used to have the nutrition thing. It was taught in schools. It was on commercials. They talked about all the foods that were good and everything else. There's no talk about that. Everybody want to live a kind of crazy life and just get a quick fix. But for those of us who try to live holistic lives and don't deal with it and have, haven't had a cold in 10 years and all that stuff, I don't want certain things to be implanted into my system. You know, I should have the right to be able to say, hey, you know, I'll deal with whatever comes with it. If you're afraid, the shot is there, get the shot. I respect that. <clears throat> Disrespect the fact that the people who don't want to get it. And again, for people to stand out here, when you were in fear, you know, some Dr. Dale, some Dr. Dale, some guy had you in a grocery store, and I said, okay, get up out of here. If you don't get your shot, it's disgraceful. Thank you. 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 I don't really. <laughs> Woo! We touched some, some good topics today. I feel as though we did. Um, I know it's, it's late. It's 9 o'clock almost. Um, so I don't want to keep you guys, even though I would love to sit here and talk all night. Because I, really I really do enjoy this. I really enjoy um, understanding people's whys and understanding, like, how they kind of got to where they are and their thinking. And I also enjoy different perspectives because we need that because that's the only way for us to actually grow is to hear people that don't echo what we what we feel. So I really appreciate everybody being honest up here and transparent. And also I really do appreciate everybody being respectful of the fact that everybody was honest and transparent. So I really do. Um, uh, does anybody have anything they want to close with real quick? Um, um, the score of the grades in the <laughs> Thanks for the invitation. Yeah, thank you, Julia. I appreciate you. Anybody else? Thank you all for being here and listening. Yeah, and yeah. talking. Yes, I appreciate the audience members for sharing um, your perspectives for sure. Um, well, I've done several of these with Aaron now, and every one of them has been uh, enjoyable. And uh, the dialogue is always fantastic. And I appreciate the opportunity to express my views and hear other views and uh, help everybody hopefully understand each other better. Yeah, yeah. Um, I guess I just want to leave with one thing. I don't want to start another argument, so please don't respond. <laughs> <laughs> you got at least it's two lawyers in here. Two lawyers in here. As a culmination of things, um, how much time do you give someone to, uh, say, accept marriage equality, accept gay marriage, accept interracial marriage, accept the black people just being black and living. Um, I know that there is a, a huge generation gap between all of us, but uh, that gap needs to be closed. And the, the slower it's closed, the more people that get infected, the more people that are dying. And you can't give someone forever. You can't give someone 20 years to accept things like that. It has to be done as soon as possible. Thank you. Let's grace her with a happy birthday song. Oh,